Thank you. 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 Thank you.
And um, she didn't know she was being recorded for a movie. I just recorded her as we drew pictures and talked about the world and played with clay. And um, and I had, I had done this once before with the previous one of these when she was four. And at, and at that age, everything is marvelous, what she says, you know, it's, it's these short little snippets, it's reactions, it's look at this, let's go over here. And it's very easy to edit around and, and write around and, and create a story around. Um, long story short, she lives in Edinburgh, I live in Austin, I only get to see her once a year, so I record her annually. Um, and at age five, she wouldn't shut up. It, it, went from, it went from those cute little reactions to monologues about this woman named Felicia, who we don't know who she is, <laughs> and, and, and this bracelet and triangle land and all of these things. And I walked away from those audio sessions feeling really discouraged because it had nothing to do with what I thought I wanted to write about. And so the, the big puzzle was trying to figure out how to get this audio. She was once, once my improvisational actress, and now she's kind of a five-year-old co-writer. Um, <laughs> how to work that into, into the narrative I was, I was putting together. And it took a long time. And, 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 um, and then my other actress is the, the great Julia Pott. She's, um, she's an animator herself. And um, she's, just, she's just amazing. She's never acted before. These, these films, and um, I could listen to her read a phone book. She's, she's just so fun. And you've got a, a lot of history of just writing the script and writing your movies, and is it more fun or difficult like, having to deal with other human beings as an animator? <laughs> <laughs> we have no social skills whatsoever. Animators should not be given microphones. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, but working with a, a five-year-old and not knowing what she's going to say creates this spontaneity. And making an animated film is the least spontaneous way to make a movie, period. You're grinding things out, you know, one frame at a time for months and years. And um, anything I can get that creates this sort of this freshness is, is, is really valuable. And, and with her, it, it, once I cracked it and figured it out and, 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 and discovered how I could work her weird little monologues into this story, then it did take a lot of pressure off me as a writer because suddenly I could come up with everything and um, because she lives in Scotland, I can't get more material. And, you know, it's, it's this or nothing from these sessions and, and so you have to make a movie from this or, or, or walk away. Or you're happy how it worked out. Yeah, and, and she's, uh, she's, she's seen the first one, and she finally saw the second one, this one, and um, it's, she's, she's eight now, and she's gotten you know, wind of, you know, it's at Sundance, and people are seeing it, and traveling, and um, in, her, in her class, her, the version of kindergarten over there, she had to write a sentence about herself, and she wrote, um, I am beautiful and famous. <laughs> <laughs> she's a room and she's an expert. <laughs> she's a great teenager. <laughs> Georgie, with Garfield, like, how did you come up uh, with the story? Because it's deceptively minimal. There's actually a lot going on in it. Yeah, well, well Mario, who's here with us, is a writer for the film. He's, uh, she, it was the, the first time with old friends that she asked me for the script and it had written on it, a comedy skit. And there was just these people bantering. I thought, hmm, there is a lot more going on here. And and that's kind of where it started. I just sort of looked at looked at that and thought, okay, well, we use comedy as a way to kind of guard ourselves. And to me, I could start to think about these characters in a way that they're very similar but very different. And using uh, using this situation that probably all know. No, I mean, oh, everybody. Yes. <laughs> everyone knows, maybe. Um, using, this, uh, using this kind of, um, just uh, just putting us in a place that we can empathize with when we're putting us into something that feels quite real. I mean, that was always the intention, was to just try and make you feel like you're in the room with two people, and that there's moments with one or the other that you can really somehow relate to. Yeah, did you feel the pressure to kind of, was there any at some point, like, oh, we better have some sort of big reveal or something? Like, you don't fall into that cliche at all. No, I mean, 
No, I just really, like I shot them all in singular takes. Um, and we, I think we shot in the apartment like six or seven times. Each time was like 15, around 15 minutes. And every time I was sitting in the one room that we didn't shoot, I was like, yay. Because I just like really enjoyed watching these two characters. And I didn't want the actors to like have to feel that they had to kind of give us that ta-da moment or a big, hey, guess what? Or, or any of that. I just wanted to like enjoy being with them. And so when you shoot that way, don't shoot that way. It's a fucking disaster. I didn't really like it. But when you shoot that way, then of course it's like you want to stay true to that. You don't want the edit to in some way manipulate emotions or feelings. So I mean, really the thing for me was to just feel that you're sitting in the room <coughs> and then you're just getting something that you, that we, that you wouldn't normally get. And of course, like you said, there's hopefully you feel that there's many more things going on there. Yeah, there it works. We're seeing with that. Aria, is this, is, is someone strong going off? Is, it, is this uh, something that you did research on? Is this a story that's totally fiction, or is it from... Um, yeah, it's a mix of things, I guess. It's a bit personal, it's a bit research. Um, it's shot in Athens, and the part in Athens is bought by the Chinese. Like Chinese owned, uh, so there's a big immigration of Chinese people in Athens, um, and then I was an immigrant for a while because I lived in New York, and I actually came up with the script when I was when I had to leave New York. Um, I I went there when I was 18, so New York was a big symbol of freedom for me, and I felt like I was losing that. So the story has a lot of that message going on, I guess. And yeah, I wanted to bring these two characters together because they're searching for their own freedom in some way. And right now, what is the film culture right now like in Greece? But you also live in Cyprus, right? Yes, I do. Yeah. What is the film culture? Is there a lot of things being made there right now? Sorry, what? Is there, is there a lot of, is there actually like an independent film scene in Greece? Cyprus? Or in Greece. in Greece, I mean, in Cyprus, yeah, kind of. With I, I think there's like one or two feature films made per year, um, very small movies usually. Uh, in Greece, there's more, but there's not much money. I mean, you cannot compare it to the United States. But yeah. have you shown the film there yet in Cyprus? Not yet. Um, I'm going to do that in October because it's a short film festival. Which is great, you should all send your film. What's the name of it? It's called the uh, International Short Film Festival of Cyprus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Charles and Jordan, I hope this is based on a true story. <laughs> oh, my God. every week I'm really. Do <laughs> <laughs> you take that one? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, no, it's not. <laughs> themes, based on the themes. You know, we we, had, we had the idea of this uh, before we're boyfriends now. Um, for now. For now. <laughs> for now. Um, when we get into festivals, we're boyfriends. Um, and uh, and uh, before we started dating, we were just like bored and hanging out one day. And we were like, what if we tried, like, what should we do tonight? We're like, what if we just tried to sleep with women? <laughs> they're like, well, what would that realistically look like? And we're like, we'd probably just like take them to a hotel and like go to the bathroom and whisper to each other. <laughs> like, why do we do this? And then we're like, let's write that. And we sat down to write it and we're like, oh, well, we have to really make sure this isn't offensive. We have to make sure we're right and not wrong. And we also, I mean, we, we are friends with a lot of gay men, so it's easy to see a lot of the, the flaws of the, the masculine culture in in our community. Men, all men are horrible. Yeah, no, truly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but we're not talking about how men are bad recently. I feel like it's all racist. Gay men are not from, from this. I think that's what we wanted to say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and have you questioned with anybody yet? Like how, oh. What was the response you were hoping for? Did it work? Dead silence we were hoping for. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, like, everyone's laughing and it sucked. Yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of people would be turned on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I came all over my back. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I thought that Sundance was a porn festival. <laughs> <laughs> I got um, the wrong magazine. I had mail, I guess. Um, but when we, we first we first screened it for like just some friends and stuff, and we were like, I can't believe we're locking our friends in a room and making them see us fuck our other friends. <laughs> <laughs> I think we did want that on some level. <laughs> We both, we both took um, this uh, narcissist test recently, um, <laughs> and like one of the questions was like, do you like showing off your body? And I was like, no, I hate my body so much. And then he was like, do you realize like the last three things you've made, you've been fully naked? And I was like, oh wow, I guess I do like showing off even though I hate it. What was your question? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to stand for a few questions. <laughs> Um, I was curious how you guys, um, Pete and um, you guys had the same DP. Yeah, Drew Daniels, he's so good. He's so Yeah, I just look at 
And you're studying, you're studying business? I am. And what do you want to do with that? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, I mean, we do this thing every year, you've heard us on dance, but we don't take it for granted. So I'd like to thank all of you for showing up, and I'd like to thank you for making your films and saying <laughs>